Early in 2022, we managed to pick up these here. These are the Nintendo Switch Online controllers for the NES. And these look great, they play great, overall very happy with these. A few months later, we were able to pick up this here. This is the Nintendo 64 Nintendo Switch Online controller. And this, not quite as good very difficult to get your hands on too. Now, I was able to get my hands on that thanks to the team over at Cheap Ass Gamer. You can follow them on Twitter at Video Game Deals. They basically set out an alert letting people know these were in stock. They sent out another recent alert to let people know that the NES, the Super NES, and the subject of today's video were available. Hey everyone, Gary here with Rock Solid Productions, and we have the Sega Genesis three button controller designed for the Nintendo Switch online service. This is designed and patterned after the original three button controller, even though I think Japan got the six button controller. We don't like you for that. We want the six button controller here. But we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna take a look at this, we're gonna test it out, and we are gonna see exactly how it measures up. So let's take a look at the box for the Sega Genesis Edition controller. I mean, it's one of those things, it is a good looking box. Just really weird to have that Nintendo branding on a Sega controller. Here you can see the Nintendo Online logo. Um, on the side, you've got the very cool, like the, the checkerboard pattern and everything on the entire box. Now looking at the back of it here, the Sega Genesis control pad for the Nintendo Switch system. Before using the controller for the first time, charge and pair it with a Nintendo Switch system. And it just has that in alternate languages. To go ahead and pair this from the home menu, select controllers go into change grip order and press and hold down the sync button on the bottom of the controller here for a few seconds, release it and you'll see the LEDs kind of cycle back and forth. The other images on here basically just watch you through how you can go and charge it either using the included cable to the switch dock, otherwise you can also use a separate AC adapter too. Uh, interesting here that they do point out that the controller does not have Joy-Con functionality, compatibility only with Nintendo Switch systems, so that tells me like no rumble, no uh, um, gyroscope or anything along that in here, no camera either. Looking at the size of the box, I have to say this actually really reminds me of the box for the Sega Genesis Mini. Speaking of which, we will be reviewing the Sega Genesis Mini 2 and the Sega Mega Drive Mini 2 as well. Make sure you follow us for when we have those posted. Ha 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 ha! Wow, this thing is like really stuck inside the box. I'm having a hard time getting it out. So in here, you've got a lot of box surrounding just the controller itself. We'll take that and set it aside. See if there's anything underneath. And here we do have a USB charging cable. Looks to be about three to four feet long. We're gonna leave that in the box. We've got plenty of these charge cables. This way we know where it is in the future. Here is the moment of truth. Let's go ahead and take this out of the uh, foam packaging and everything too. Now it does have a mode button up on the top. It has the capture, a USB, and a home button up top too. I do love the fact that it is USB-C for charging. That is a welcome addition. The buttons on the D-pad feel like a Genesis controller, which is good to see. Since it feels like a Genesis controller, let's compare it to a Sega Genesis controller. Here you can see this is one of the older ones because it's got all the gray markings on it versus this has the orange on the face of it for the uh, Nintendo Switch Online version. Now one thing I am interested to see is I do have my caliper here. My battery is actually done in it, but I want to compare the size of the buttons. Looks like we're about 14 millimeter tall on the button on the Switch Online and identical on the uh, buttons here on the original on the D-pad. Going point to point here, we are at 24 and a half millimeter tall there. Although this looks like it's a little shorter. It looks like it's uh, you know about a millimeter shorter here. Even looking top down, you can actually see that it is slightly smaller. But the ergonomics and everything, they've pretty much nailed on here. Now, I do personally prefer the six button controller. I think it is more comfortable. I like having the extra buttons and everything on there. But, you know, if you are a fan of the original three button controller from Sega for the Genesis or the Mega Drive, this is a pretty good one to one replica and recreation of it. Now let's go ahead and let's play some games. So starting out here, we're going to go ahead and we are going to pair our controller to our Nintendo Switch. As you can see, we are in the pairing menu. And then to do this, you simply hold down the pairing button 
down on the bottom right there for a few seconds. The lights should start to cycle. There you go. We're paired. I'll take it. Now that we have our controller paired, let's dive into the Sega Genesis Online games. So what do we want to... I mean, it just seems right to start off with Sonic the Hedgehog, am I right? I will say one thing about the controller. I hate that. That one always gets me no matter what. Um, the D-pad feels... Like, it feels hollow. It's not that it's cheap. It just doesn't feel like there's as much material perhaps molded into it as on the original. So it definitely feels kind of... Not substantial enough, I guess, is the best way that I could really put that. We'll test out the uh, special zone here before we, we leave our friend Sonic. It took me a while to realize that you could actually go all the way over like that uh, doing this. I mean, overall, I mean, this is not a very technically challenging game, I would say. Uh, but overall, this is doing exactly what it should. Let's go back to the game selection. Uh, let's try some Streets of Rage. Yeah, the button presses, again, they feel good. The, um, yeah! The, the D-pad just, it, it feels like they could, you know... And this comes from me doing so much 3D printing lately. It feels like it could have used more material in the mold. I have to admit, back in the day, I was not a... I had never played this before. Um, great beat-em-up. I absolutely love playing now. I would say if you are a fan of... Uh, Final Fight, this would be a great game to get into. All right, Streets of Rage working well. Now, one thing I'm not seeing in here is the ability to rewind, which is kind of a bummer. Um, yeah, those are the only options. No rewind uh, like in uh, with the other controllers that we have out there. So I would say the buttons feel very, very good. I'm, I'm liking the buttons very much. The D-pad to me just feels a little insub uh, unsubstantial right now. And I like what my counselor said about my life. No, he said unremarkable, I guess. You know, one of the things for me, I was bummed that the Amico basically wound up being a a non-factor. I was looking forward to Earthworm Jim 4. That was honestly going to be the reason I was going to buy an Amico. Now, for me, one of the big tests with Earthworm Jim is always coming up here. You know, if I can get through the, the hook area, basically... See, it didn't do it that time, which is kind of annoying. This is the first time where I felt, there we go, like the buttons weren't quite as responsive as they could have been. One of the things I want to test out here is I do have the Castlevania collection here. Um, I want to check and see if the, um, the Genesis Castlevania game works with this. So I can whip, but I can't jump. That's annoying. That's really annoying. So I would say this is unplayable. Let's go home. I'm going to try Street Fighter 30th Anniversary Collection as well, just to see if this is usable at all and kind of test the lag latency delay like I normally do. We'll see how it plays. So essentially what I've done is I've mapped the controls so that A and B work for um, high punch and high kick. That's about all my offense that I'm going to have. But I will be honest, that's about all that I really use. I know that the medium and the low are supposed to be faster but less effective. So I'm able to, to pull off the Hadouken and the spinning sidekick okay. There we go, it does work. Okay, so overall, not bad, but clearly only three buttons, so I don't have access to all all the moves and everything. You know, I'm going to go into the Mega Drive here. Actually, before I do that, we're going to close 
Um, no, we are going to go into the Mega Drive. I want to test out the Castlevania in here um, to see if it works and if it's mapped correctly, because that's, that's really something of interest to me. And you can tell that this is the Switch Online version by uh, looking in the top uh, left corner. Yeah, this is working fine. So that's irritating that the mapping for the buttons is so exclusively tied to the Switch Online. I mean, I'm glad that it works at least. That's nice, but it's just, it's an annoyance. I will say, I mean, this this does feel like a regular three-button Genesis controller. One thing, if you notice, it did not make any special noises there. Um, so let's go into Super Mario 3. So the button mapping is reversed as far as uh, run and jump, which is annoying. This is hard to... T you know what this reminds me of is reverse Mario Brothers on... Oh, that's right. I can't even hit the the mode button to go back. That sucks. Okay. Um, so overall, what do I think of this? I think that it has promise, uh, but I don't think that it has all the execution there that I wish that it did. Um, it, it's okay. I think the D-pad is not a strong suit, um, and some of the button lack of responsiveness that I ran into on Earthworm Jim is a little bit concerning for me. Um, the button mapping, the fact that, like, it's a Genesis game. Let me play it with the Genesis-style controller. Don't make me have to go... And I know I can go into the Switch Online, or the Switch menu itself, and adjust the um, the button mapping there. I don't want to have to do that. Uh, we'll, we'll go in... What do we do real quick? We'll do Comic Zone to finish this out as we're kind of sharing some, some final thoughts here. Um, I think it's well-balanced. I think it's pretty comfortable. I think they've done a good job matching the ergonomics. So what do I think overall of the Sega Genesis 3-button controller for the Nintendo Switch online service? Well, like I mentioned in the gameplay video, the D-pad left a little bit to be desired. I didn't think the play control was quite where I really wanted it to be. Plus, if you want to use it to play other Genesis games on the Switch, well, it's kind of a pain in the rear end, to be honest with you. The button mapping is not correct. And even for doing simple things like playing the Castlevania Collections version of Castlevania Bloodstained, it didn't work right. I had to actually go in to the Genesis Collection version, and there it worked well. It also just seemed like an Earthworm Gym, like I had more problems with this than using a Pro Controller or even using some of the Retrobit controllers that also work with the Nintendo Switch. And that's one of the cool things things too is Retrobit actually has their Bluetooth enabled six button controller. They have their 2.4 gigahertz version that you can use the dongle and plug it into the side of your system and it'll work that way too. They are coming out with a version they are calling the Big Six that basically takes this design adds a second row of buttons underneath here. We are excited to be able to test that. Make sure you hit that subscribe button so that way when we do go ahead and review that you're kept informed and up to date. Overall, for what they're charging, 50 bucks for one controller. It's $30 for a single Super Nintendo controller. With more buttons. Um, guys? As a consumer? Stop screwing me over. This should not be a $50 controller. It just shouldn't. And shame on Nintendo for kind of raping the customer over the coals. Now, if you do want to check out our original review of the N64, Nintendo Switch Online controller, the NES controllers, and more, those videos, they're coming up right now. Thank you so much for watching this episode. If you want to help support Rock Solid Productions and be a part of our community, there's a number of different ways you can do so. First and foremost, join us over on our Patreon page or become a channel member here on YouTube. By joining through either one of those methods, you get early access to just about all of our video content, exclusive content, and a whole lot more. We also give you shout outs at the end of each and every one of our videos. You can also pick up some awesome Rock Solid Productions swag. We've got t-shirts, sweatshirts, hoodies, and more available through our Teespring store on screen right now, too. You can also pick up some of our awesome 3D printed cartridge stands, amiibo holders, Nintendo DS holders, and more 
by visiting our 3D printer store on screen right now as well. Links for everything will be down below in a pinned comment. If you want to stay up to date with everything we have going on here at Rock Solid Productions, make sure that you're following us on the different social media networks. We're on Facebook at facebook.com slash Productions, Instagram at instagram.com slash Productions GK, and Twitter at Rock Solid Studios. If you're looking to pick this and other retro and modern gaming accessories up, make sure that you head on over to castlemaniagames.com. He has a feature over there called Castle Cash, where the more you spend, the more you earn towards future purchases, and Castle Cash is just like cash. He also offers convenient payment plans for more expensive items over $50. Finally, make sure that you use promo code ROCKSOLID10 when you're shopping at castlemaniagames.com as it can save you up to 10% on most items on the website. Again, thank you for watching this episode and I cannot wait to see you again soon.